Nathan, go to class.
All right, I'm going to be starting the five minute challenge with the timer now. So I'm already 10 meters away. So let's remember we stay focused on our own stuff. Talk to all your table group members and stay on task. In a low voice. Thank you. Oh yeah, that was the bike. That one has good. Uh, which brand? Oh, cool, because then she's here. Yep. I can hear both. Yeah, I can hear both. Yeah, I can hear both.
Share what they wrote down? No. Uh, oh my god. Plain? Um, like, I don't like, it's like, wanted to um, do today was I wanted to jump into and explain unit two. We're going to be doing starting the, our new unit. Um, we're going to be kind of going away from geography a little bit and kind of jumping more into history. Um, and so I'm going to give you a little overview of unit two today. And then in the next week, we'll kind of dive into these little aspects a little bit deeper um, to really get a full understanding. Um, so yeah. As we jump into unit two, we're going to be kind of keeping this question in the back of our minds. You know, how do civilizations respond to challenges in order to grow and develop? We also have the question up on the back wall there if you guys ever want to refresh your memory of what we're, we're trying to figure out in our class today. If you're ever wondering what are we doing today, that's what we're doing. Um, we're always going to keep referring back to it, so it's a good idea to kind of keep that in your mind. But first... Why do we study ancient history? We, we tried to figure out what it was today. Now, why are, why are we doing it? Why should we care about it? I have a few ideas up on the board here, but I, I want to know what you guys think. Yeah. Like learn from it, right? Yeah. Yeah, Elijah? Did you have an idea? No, you're just waving your arms around. Uh, Jason, you've got more? Also, um, the reason why I'm studying ancient history is because we went and learned to know a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, if we didn't study ancient history, there wouldn't be that much stuff that we can 
Yeah, yeah, you guys are all hitting on the right parts here for sure. Um, you know, I added to this last point I want to make pretty um, clear. So much of our modern world, so the world we are in today, was based off of these ancient civilizations that we'll be studying here in a little bit. I think that's really important because it, it kind of answers that question of why should we care? Why should we bring this, um, this stuff that we're learning and this information we're learning in with us into other jobs and with our life after sixth grade? Um, and that's a great example of why. It just helps us understand our world a lot better. So, so I'm going to give you a little bit about um, early humans. Tomorrow we'll dive into it a little bit deeper. Um, but kind of a good idea to understand who they were. They were these hunter-gatherers uh, about 11 to 12,000 years ago. And the main thing with them is that they would chase after their food. They hunted their food. So they needed to go with the, their food wherever their food went. They followed. Um, they also had this nomadic culture, which simply means that they did not stay place. They moved around. They uh, were in search of their food. They were gathering, um, so that's the second part, gatherers, as they're gathering their uh, berries and some seeds and nuts along the way as they're following their food. That's another thing they did to stay alive and to eat. Uh, but the nomadic culture, another thing with that is that they, their, their groups were relatively small. It wasn't large groups of people, you know, and herds of people going searching for food. It was a few people at a time. Very by themselves. So, yeah. Uh, well, kind of like Native American, right? Maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. I can't really speak to that. Yeah, as because, much. Is that like because I'm part Native American? Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mark. Um, we went to the outside. Mm -hmm. And two, are we even yeah, that's a great uh, point. So we have um, arche archaeological evidence. Um, archaeology is the study of finding bones and plants that have been fossilized. So that's kind of a scientific word, basically meaning it's just kind of um, preserved and protected like over the years. Pretty much. So, yeah, people during this time looked a lot different than you and me look, and a lot of yeah. other people in this group. Yeah, they, they had different shaped heads, they had different shaped bodies, and so that was one of the ways they could do that. They could also do that by carbon dating. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Uh, but it's where you can date um, an item based off of how much, I believe, carbon dioxide that item has received over the years. And so that's another way if this item has received a certain amount, it can mean it's a certain amount of years old. I'm going to let I say that real quick. Yeah. And also, one, also another thing how they can tell and that can be because they made pictures before. Mm -hmm. Like how people, for example, like Pocahontas or something. They made a picture they look like they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, like, so are those just assuming that this is 11,000 years ago? It's, no, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, it's an educated guess, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, but there's, there's a lot of, um, evidence to suggest that. Obviously, we can't tell a hundred and 
10% that we know for sure this was this date because then we give you an exact date, you know. So that's why we're rounding it around this 11 to 12,000 years. It also is rounded out like this because these early humans didn't start forming into early humans until this time either. I mean, there were a lot of people that were, a lot of people at this time that were still evolving and still changing into the people that we know today. Um, so it took a long time for these people to to do something. You know, eleven thousand years ago. But but yeah, uh, that's what's that? Well, uh, actually, if we want to bring that up, um, it's there's the whole idea of evolution is that we all come from apes. That's the whole idea. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I don't, I don't want to work with That's okay. I don't want to work with them. like it's fake. No, 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 what if the artifacts and stuff were just yes, like yes. really rusty and then somebody's like, yeah, this is from like a million years ago, but nobody really knows that it was from like a million years ago and it was from like four hundred million years ago? I mean, she's kind of already because you can date it, like 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 I was saying with the carbon dating. That's a way a lot of people will date artifacts and bones and other things like that. They, they you have there's evidence to prove that this object is a lot older than. You know, maybe 400 years old. There's a lot of scientific evidence to suggest that. All right, Serenity, real quick. They make um, guesses pretty much off of the fossil. Yep. Edu educated guesses. Yep. A lot of history is that because we don't well, we don't know for sure unless we have a time machine, really. And so we have to do. So we have to do our best guess with uh, the information that's provided with us and what we can find first. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like where they find your fossil, kind of. Mm -hmm. Like, if they're like, uh, please tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But if they're sure. like, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm pretty sure they make guesses, like by fossils, mm -hmm. like to be, for example, if there was a mammoth, for example, and there was someone that was like holding a weapon, all right, I'm going to go ahead and transition, okay, real quickly into a video. I just want you guys to get it so you can understand Hunter Gather and what that word means. I teach the great things, and I teach our buddy. You wasted your pain time. I'm trying to find. In this History Illustrated video, we're going to discuss the vocabulary word hunter-gatherer. Now, a hunter-gatherer does exactly what their name suggests. They would hunt, or they would gather, or they do both. They hunt and gather things to survive. So imagine that you would have a guy that would look like this. He would wander around looking for things to survive on, and perhaps he would... Uh, just follow a herd of mammoths looking for food and hunting them, or maybe he would gather berries or nuts or any number of things that would grow naturally in the wild. These people would be called hunter-gatherers. They are typically nomadic, which means they wander. They go wandering around looking for things, which means they have no permanent home. So no permanent home. They wander, and they typically oh, hunt true. or gather all the things necessary to live. Cool. All right. Oh, that just remind me of the crew. Well, you did for the kids. Hi. Mm -hmm. oh, so, um, what do you guys think happens next? So we have got these hunter-gatherer societies. What do you think happens next to them? What do they do? What is your best guess? Yeah. Um. They evolve into people who build houses, and like what Tyson said, they could have some people could have evolved into Native Americans. And yeah. 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 Yeah, Mark. 
They probably um, what, mo what most likely happened is that you know a certain amount of people have tried them over time and passed down to their um, little ones, their offsprings, and say, "Hey, don't eat these ones," uh, which is really advanced for them. They were able to communicate and pass down knowledge and information so that their people could survive. You know, I mean, animals soon figured out what berries were safe and weren't weren't safe either, right? Because they were able to survive more food. So, yeah. Yeah, they could only uh, have yeah, people that it wouldn't make sense that they should know. Mm -hmm. Do they think uh, all the other people have been around for lots and lots of years? Mm -hmm. So it kind of then it would make sense that they did know what like what parents are bad or mm -hmm. good because yeah. they can see it. Yeah, they were able to pass down that information. Yeah. Does um anybody notice how this map here looks different than the ones we've been studying in class? Yeah, it looks a little weird, right? Like, um, yeah, that's true too, huh? Uh, but also North America and South America are over here. Yeah, so the reason why that is, is because it's showing you a period of migration. That's what the arrows are for. And the arrow goes through this little part right up here, which is Russia and Alaska. And at that time, there was a land bridge there. So it's showing you how people from over here were able to get over here through this land bridge, so it's through the left to right kind of thing, and also from the islands too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, is that people? Yeah. What is it called? What is it called? Like all of the all of the map stuff was together and we like together. Oh, the uh, oh, they just said that. What was it? Oh, um, Pan Pangina, right? Is that what you're talking about? Pangea, that's right. Yeah, we were just talking about that in the last. Is that what this is? Um, no, because it is separated. So this is Africa. This is Asia. This is Europe. We've got Australia. Um, we've got North America and South America. So why is it split? Yeah, that's because it's trying. This map specifically is trying to show you that the this land bridge up here was significant for the people over here. To get to over here, you know, this land is all connected in a little bit of way. This land isn't today anymore. So, but at that time it was. Just go with that. I don't know if it's that close. Yeah, cool. Um, how, like down there, they show that they traveled from here to They traveled on boats. Yeah, but if you notice too, it's kind of hard to see, but it shows you the years ago. So this says uh, a thousand years ago in this area. So it was recent enough for them to have boats and, and um, technology to get over there. Uh, during this time, when they were just moving out of Africa and into um, the, what's going to be known later as the Fertile Crescent and into Europe and everything, that was way longer ago. So this says uh, over 100,000 years ago. That's when they started migrating out of Africa. Yeah, I thought it was an interesting map, though. Also, were they called that before? What? what? Oh, like the oh. Asia, Australia. Like, yeah, were they called that before or not? I don't know. I'm sure some people had some name for it back yeah, like then. Yeah, names. I'm sure. I'm sure there. You know, at that time, we'll talk about it a little bit more tomorrow. But a lot of the language that was used back then was pictures. And so I'm sure they drew pictures of what they might have known at the time was the shape of a continent. But much of the world wasn't really fully discovered until pretty recently. So people didn't really know what the world looked like. Maps weren't really discovered until way later. So. I wish I would have that Wow. Right. So to answer your question about what happens next, so this is what happens. So the agricultural revolution. Can somebody explain what agriculture means? Anybody know? Maria. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there's, yeah, Jason. Uh, yeah, I think it was, I think it was you, like, actually, you know, 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 you yeah. And from the picture right there, it looks like they engaged horns. Mm -hmm. so they That's how they got their food. Yep. Good job. Colton's well, making an inference on our picture here. That was really smart. They were, yeah, they were able to domesticate animals, raise animals, to eat them, to do work for them, and they were able to raise crops as well. This is this is why it was a really significant time um, because it was the first time people decided to settle down and to decide to uh, produce more food for themselves. And that was really significant because it was hard to find food. You were in search of food constantly, but if you always had surplus of it, it kind of helped. So uh, we're gonna watch a quick video kind of explaining that a little bit more, and then I'll answer some questions, and then we'll go into the assignment, okay? Is this a hamburger? How's it out? <laughs> I don't Even know. Even as we know them, they've been walking around for about 200,000 years. Yet despite having bigger brains and finer hands, we continue to behave as our predecessors had. This was a nomadic lifestyle, following herds, gathering wild plants and fruits along the way. Then about 10,000 years ago, we came to a divide. On this side, we had the nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle we'd always known. On the far side, we had settled agriculture. The differences between these two are simple, but as we shall see, they have lasting implications. As a nomad, you must find your food. Since you must find your food, you must move before your food sources are depleted or before your food wanders off. Since you must be able to move, you can only store as much food as you can carry. Storage is particularly difficult because as a nomad, you eat mostly meat, which has a high nutritional value, but is difficult to preserve and store. Now let's look at the other side of the divide. As a farmer, you make your own food. In fact, you can produce more food than you can eat. This is called a surplus. Since growing crops takes time, you must stay put to care for your plants. Since you're not growing anywhere anyway, you have the option of storing lots of food. And storage is made easy because as a farmer, you eat very little meat, but a lot of grains, which have a low nutritional value but are very easy to preserve and store. So when droughts hit and the hunting is bad, nomads must move along or starve to death, while farmers can survive off the surpluses they store. Yet there are other effects of agriculture besides mere survival. The most obvious is that when you have more food, you can make more people. And because one farmer can feed several people, this makes possible the division of labor. Now, Instead of every man being a wow. well, I was going to go more into. I know it kind of cut off weird, huh? It was going to go into um, division of labor and civilization. We're going to be covering all that at another time. So I just wanted you guys to understand the agricultural revolution and why it was so important. We'll dive more into this too, probably later in the week. So, um, okay, let's go ahead and get started. Does anybody have any questions, real quick? Carla. Oh. They probably did. Um, obviously, we can't know for sure if, unless we had a time machine. <laughs> but um, they probably did because they um, were able to pass down information like those those food is poisonous. Those plants that you're eating is poisonous. You're going to die from that, you know. So they were able to pass down that information. So most likely, yes. The only record record of information we have, if they've spoke to us, is um, pictures. So so that's the only record that we have as historians. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, they 
Right. Yep. All right. So I am going to go ahead and pass it out um, through Hapara. So it'll be on your Chromebook, um, your assignment for today. Um, please put a little effort into it. Uh, it's going to be a Google form. You just have to read and then respond to a couple questions. Um, at least give me a sentence or two. I know it's the end of the day, but um, that's what I'm requesting. So I'll get that sent out to you in just a sec. All right, it's coming to you guys now. Oh, fine, but I actually, wait, it was coming to you now. Let me check. Did you guys get it? Uh, I'm checking right now. Okay. I'm going to send it again so people who do have it ignore it. All right, I just sent it out again for the people who don't have it. If you already have it, just ignore it. Is it intro? Okay, so I'm just going to take a question. What is my name? I hope you still like the bad thing. Is this going to be graded? Um, so we are going to talk about it tomorrow. We're going to bring it up and we're going to do a debrief of everything we talked about today. Wait, somebody opened it for me. What? Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're already ready. You're good to know. I was like, what? We opened it twice. Are the hunter hunter so gatherers like the nomadic part? No. Yeah, they're the nomads. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that, there's not really a correct answer for the second one. It's I just am looking for your thoughts, your insight, get your brains working. All right, and then when you guys are done with your Google form and you've got at least a sentence in each answer, this is what you will do next. You'll go to this website, www.quizlit.live, and you'll type in that code.
Do the code work? Does the QR code work? No. Yeah. I think you guys gotta really type it in, put a little effort into it. No, I just use the microphone. Yeah, I can. No. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Do I submit? Oh, 
plant animals, gather wild plant seeds first and nuts to survive. Oh, that's the wrong we're going to tie with the. No. 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 I'm the, I'm the, I think this is all. I don't know what. You're too smart for this. No! It's like really Advanced form of culture that is developed into cities. Oh, you were saying it. I think it's a little bit. It's a little a way of supplying water to an area of land. Oh, what? I don't know what any of these words mean. Me neither. That's okay. That's why we're doing this, right? Oh, 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 I'm so no, A person who moves from place to place. A person who moves from place to place. No, why did I get this Materials found in nature that are used by living things. Able to produce enough for one own A way of supplying water to an area of land. I don't know how to spell it. Micro college. Oh, I forgot that word. That's okay. Spell it. Spell it. Spell it. Let's guess spelling, okay? Micro college. 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 Micro Last question. Last question. Advanced form of culture that is developed into cities. I honestly don't know. I know what it is. I I saw Shannon show. Why? Let me do my things. You're so annoying. I didn't even submit it. I knew I was. I didn't even submit it. You said I skipped it, bro. I didn't. You said I skipped it. 
Serenity, Colton, you guys tied for first place. Fortnite on 27. These are all second. Are we looking? Am I second? And then these are third. Mario third. All right, real quickly, real quickly. We're going to keep doing these, okay? So we're going to be adding more vocabulary every day so that we keep learning more things and practicing the old stuff really quickly. What's up? No. This is just for fun, so we have an understanding. But we got to put our Chromebooks away, so let's close them up. Maybe next week. Well, we'll, we'll talk about it. Did you? I did. Can we all get our own? You get half. You get five points here, five points for that class. Great job. All right, so don't forget to put your uh, pieces of paper in your orange folder. Put your orange folder in the bin. Put your Chromebooks away. Get your backpacks on. Also, next uh, tomorrow when we do this again, I'll have candy for those who win. Okay, for those who plays. Okay. Put it in your folder. Can you remember your folder? Yeah. Folders away, pieces of paper in your folder. Let's make sure they're away. Pencils, please return your pencils if you borrowed them today. Elijah, where did you get that pencil from? Should it go back there? Yeah. So put it back there. Elijah. I did not know